YouTubers, this is Nurse Jay at Nursing the Truth, and I hope everyone's having a great day. So, I'm just chilling a little bit, and I um, always love bringing truth. You know, always biased to Egypt. And I need to show you in this Bible, this is nothing but an Egyptian story. Starting all the way back to Akhenaten, and the little leaving his Aten and wandering off, and the Egyptians actually went to other places. But I can't just be the spoiler just yet. You see, when people put this book together, they had to make it their story. As I always tell you, truth seekers, they had to take from a powerful nation and write about their stories, put their spin in it, and call it their own. So, let's jump right on into it. I'm sorry for the bright backdrop. The Amun Ra is shining very bright today. So, at least, if it's not too bright for you guys, which light is always good, at least you can hear my voice. Now, you must get your handy dandy King James. Because... What we're going to dive into is the book of Jeremiah. So please, with me, open your holy books, the Helios Biblios, meaning the sun book, to chapter 19. And I'll let you get there. <coughs> okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still trying to get over this cold. Now, let's kind of do a little backdrop on chapter 19 because it's going to get to where I need to go. And it's basically saying that this, um, the Lord, um, go and get a potter's earthen bottle and take of the ancients and the people and of the ancients and the priest and go forth into the valley of the sun of Hinnom, which is the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee. And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Ooh, I'm itching right now. Because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in to other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire. For burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake of it, nor ca it came into my mind. So this is the good, the good uh, Yahweh part where he's saying, I didn't command you to burn your sons. But the other one would have said, filet mignon. How many ounces? Eight or twelve. <clears throat> so, moving on. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Hmm. <coughs> and then he says, And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons, and eat the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one of the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness, where are their enemies? And they shall seek their lives and shall straighten them. And then it goes on to say, And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto all the hosts of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. And then it says, And then came Jeremiah from Tophet whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Now, let 
let's understand this. So Jeremiah, whether the Lord had sent him to prophesy and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, what is the Lord's house? Would it the Lord's house be the temple? Solomon's temple? As we've been taught in the scripture, the Lord's house would be a temple, right? Or the God that's ruling of the day, right? <coughs> now, <coughs> Let's go see where Jeremiah came from. It says that Jeremiah came from Tophet. So let's go to the handy dandy BibleHub.com and let's just see what Tophet is. So we're going to put in Jeremiah. Chapter 19. And verse 14. Okay. And hit INT for interlinear. And let's see, Tophet. Let's see. Okay, it is from Tophaz. Okay, let's go back, sorry. A place south of Jerusalem. So it doesn't really tell you south of Jerusalem. Well, it depends on where south is. Valley south of Jerusalem. Okay. Okay, so now we have that. All right, let's go back here. Okay. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. So this God of Jeremiah, he's coming to prophesy at the house of the Lord. And he said, I will bring upon the city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it. God, this God is something else. The schizophrenia of this thing. Or could it be the scribes have schizophrenia? Can we put them on some Prozac? Dr. Stat orders, I say. Now, let me read you something, dears. And it's going to get really good. Enjoy the show. Can you please go get some popcorn? I don't recommend Diet Coke for the aspartame causes cancer. But anyway. I'm going to give you some historical facts, my friends. Hope you don't mind. Especially when it comes to my beloved Egypt. I will expose the lies. And I will expose everything. And it doesn't matter to me. An earlier hereditary prince called Pasher or pacer, was a vizier, high priest, and God's father in the early 19th dynasty. The pacer contemporary with Pasher in Mutt, son of Mentu Imhet, was also the mayor 
of Thebes in his own time. He is best known for his investigation of tomb robberies in the Valley of the Kings during which he referred to himself as the prince that reports to the ruler, Kemwaset Ramses IX. It has also been shown that Tarqua assumed the name of Ramesses the Ninth and that it reflected a claim by Taharqua to the great throne. <clears throat> now, in the year of 16 of Ramesses the Ninth, that Archer Benapal was invading Egypt as part of his struggle with Taharqua and Tenu Anmun. Consequently, Thebes was temporarily abandoned by Taharqua and Tenu Anmun. Although the allies quickly recovered, Archer Benapal returned two years later this time with his only ally, and it was sacked. Now, let's go into a little bit of other reading, because I'm not done with this one yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Just bear with me, children. My phone wants to act up from time to time. There we go. Have to get to the meat of the matter, sweetie. You can find this on revolvy.com, R-E-V-O-L-V-Y.com. The ancient Egyptian noble pacer P-A-S-E-R, was vizier in the reigns of Seti I and Ramesses II during the 19th dynasty. He would later also become high priest, very important that you understand this, high priest of Amun. Pacer was the son of Nebneteru Tenri, who was high priest of Amun and Mary Ra, who was chief of the harem of Amun. His maternal grandparents are named in his tomb as A-N-I-Y and Naya, who apparently came from Memphis. In Pacer's tomb, a brother, Tatia, steward in the temple of Ma'at, is mentioned. Pacer was part of the close entourage of Seti the first son. Then, the prince Ramesses and a hereditary prince and count. Pacer held many titles and honors throughout his life, and the autobiographical text in Pacer's tomb tells us that Men Ma'at Ra, better known as Seti the First, elevated Pacer to the rank of first companion of the palace and later promoted him to be chief chamberlain of both lands and high priest of great magic. Eventually, Seti I appointed Pacer to be, listen, listen very closely. Hmm? Seti I appointed Pacer to be city governor and vizier. Pacer received the tribute of the foreign lands for his king. Did you hear what I just said? Foreign lands for his king Seti. He was the city governor and vizier and a high priest. Listen to me, because it's going to tie into what I'm saying. And he was sent throughout Egypt to calculate the revenue. When Ramesses II, the greatest pharaoh beside Tutmosis III, dear, that reigned 66 years and had multiple, multiple children took the throne. He reappointed Passer as chief chamberlain of the Lord of both lands and high priest of great magic and vizier. 
and among his major works were the construction of the tomb of Seti I in the Valley of the Kings. And yes, I've been there too. It's beautiful. So Pacer held an array of other titles as well, according to inscriptions on statues and monuments. He was a dignitary and judge, mouth of Nakin, prophet of Ma'at, seal bearer of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, and superintendent of every work of the king and chief of secrets of the hieroglyphic. Pacer is last attested as vizier in year 21 of Ramesses II, and he may have held this office during the reigns of Seti I and Ramesses II for over 25 years. Eventually, Ramesses II appointed Pacer as high priest of Amun in Thebes. Listen to me. Thebes, which is Luxor, which is south of Cairo, which is almost in the middle of the country of Egypt, as you know it today. A statue of Pacer giving his title as high priest was found in the Karnak Cache. The statue now is in the Cairo Museum, and Pacer is said to be a noble and count, the high priest of Amun, and the superintendent of prophets of all, Thebian gods. A shabti for the high priest Pacer is in the University College London Collection. Pacer is known for many of his Monuments and from statuary, his tomb is described below. Monuments naming Pacer come from all over Egypt. There are a handful of items for which the province is unknown. For instance, a gray granite statue holding a stele belongs to Pacer, as does a black granite squatting statue now in the British Museum. A door lintel. Shows Pacer adoring King Ramesses II, and Pacer is giving the titles hereditary noble and count and God's father, sim priest, city governor, and vizier. A statue showing Pacer holding a stele, now in the Louvre. An amulet in the shape of a stele was found in Tanis, but originally came from Pi Ramesses, the vizier is shown adoring King Ramesses II. In Memphis, in Middle Egypt, a statue with Ptah from the Temple of Ptah in Memphis is now in Cairo. Besides the title of vizier, Pacer is also said to be the ruler with Bat Scepter in the mansion of Sekhmet and superintendent of all treasures of the king. Now let's go here. <coughs> superintendent of all treasures of the king. Eyes of all the king and the entire land who brings contentment of the two lands for his master and ears of the king in his palace and several more titles. His mother, Mary Ra, is said to be Hakutpata in Memphis. An ivory pin case from Abydos, now in the Liverpool Museum, is inscribed for the Vizier Pacer. In Eastern Thebes, three statues of Pacer come from this area, and all three depict the Vizier Pacer. In Western Thebes, several pieces of graffiti or name mentioning Pacer depict. Ramesses II, before the goddess Hathor mentioned the vizier Pacer. The tomb of Kenan Amun from the reign of Amenhotep II mentions Pacer. The tomb of Kedi, a treasure from the 11th dynasty, mentions a visit of Pacer who went to see the works of his father. In Upper Egypt, a chapel of Pacer is located in West Silsili in the Horemheb Spaso. Pacer is given the titles Nobor and Count, Judge and Dignitary, Mouth of Nakin, Prophet of Ma'at, and City Governor and Vizier. He is also said to be the Superintendent of Prophets and all the gods in Upper and Lower Egypt.
Pacer and his parents worshiping the gods. There's also scenes before Osiris and Ma'at and his parents, before Winifer and Pacer participating in the Valley Festival praising Ra and Amun. Now let's see about something else. Now, who is his father? Now let's go down here. Wajeneres. Wajeneres, a sister and player of Amun Ra. She was a Nubian wife. The daughter of the king's son, Pai Ankhar, and granddaughter of Pai, P I Y E. The name of her father appears on an offering table found in the first court. An inscription in the tomb appears to name, excuse me, her mother, excuse me, as a lady of the house and noble lady Shepmut. Wajenarir's mother appears to be an Egyptian woman. Wajenarir's and Montu Amhat had a son named Pasher. Okay. <clears throat> also, Mentuhemhet, the prince of Thebes that I said that was Pasher's father, he also was a prince and the city mayor of Thebes and fourth prophet of Amun around 690 to 656 BCE, and the style, intimate yet formal, excluding both strength and character and serenity, an example of the return to Middle Kingdom aesthetics and values promoted by the Kushite kings of the 25th dynasty. Kushite is Ethiopian Nubian kings. Okay. Now, I don't want to bore you. So now let's get on to it, children. <coughs> so I've given you the backdrop of the vizier, governor, the eyes and ears of the pharaoh, the superintendent of the treasures of the pharaoh in Upper and Lower Egypt, reigned for a long time he was under Seti the first and Ramesses the second, and he is known all over from Upper and Lower Egypt. If you turn to your Bibles, to Jeremiah 20, and it reads, Now Pasher, the son of Emmer the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on tomorrow that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Pasher, but Magoramisabib, which means you're terrible all around. And thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all friends. And they shall fall by the sword and their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of the city and all the labors thereof and all the precious things thereof and all the treasures of the king of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon and thou 
Pasher. And all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity, and thou shalt come to Babylon, and there you shall die, and shalt be buried there, and all thy friends to whom thou hast prophesied lies. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and I have prevailed. I am in derision daily, everyone mocking me. Now, <clears throat> I told you where he was vizier, where he was in a governor. Didn't I tell you Thebes? Egypt? Verse 1, Pasher says, the son of Emmer the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord. What house are you talking about? Because you're sure not talking about the house of Yahweh. You are talking about the house of the God Amun. You have historical people that are twisted up into a bag of lies and this web will come down. Pasher was noted to have been captured in Assyria in the when they invaded Egypt. If Pasher was the governor of Thebes and he is noted to have been captured by Assyria in the invasion of Egypt, it is not in Judea. The Assyrian kings wrote about pilfering Thebes and setting fire to it and taking the silver and the gold and the gold off the doors of the temple. Neba tro Neba Kadrezer, not Nebuchadnezzar. Nebu Chadrezer was killed by Tenu At Amun and Darius killed Arshabinapal. These are Egyptian high priests. Jeremiah was an Egyptian high priest. Isaiah, Egyptian high priest. Pashur, Pacer. His was in the house of Amun, the temple of Amun in Thebes, for God's sakes. I've been there to the Luxor temple. I know where it's at. So you're going to tell me that Jeremiah was in Judea, where we think they're now at? But he's going to prophesy some crap in Thebes.
And then he says in 21, the word which came into Jeremiah from the Lord. This is bullshit, people. When King Zedekiah sent unto him Pashur, the son of Mel Keli, excuse me, which the scribes can't even get it right. It's a fake name on both of them because I've already told you whose dad was Pashur. It's Montu Imhet. Look in your dictionary, in your Wikipedia. Saying, inquire, I pray thee of the Lord for us. For Nebu Chad Rezer, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so, be that the Lord will deal with us to all his wandering works, that he may go up from us. Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall ye say to Zedekiah, Thus say the Lord God of Israel, before, behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without, without the walls, and I will assemble them in the midst of the city. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. And I will smite the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast, and they shall die of a great pestilence. And this God said, and unto this people thou shalt say, thus saith the Lord, behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He that abideth in this city shall die by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and faileth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live and his life shall be unto him for a prey. For I have set my face against the city for evil and not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn with fire. So, how do you like to know now that Pasher, the city governor, the vizier, the high priest of Amun, was in Thebes, in the temple of the Lord. Praise God for a moon. See, Jeremiah was a high priest of Egypt, but he also had ties to the Babylonians and the Assyrians. We'll get to that too. But chapter 20 and 21 Gives two different fathers to Pesher, but I've already told you who the real man was, Montu Imhat. So go check him out. Very powerful people. So, Jeremiah, you can't come scally wagging around giving prophecy in Judea when it was Thebes. Until then, Hotep and Ashe, and read your Egyptian history and go pilfering through these scriptures because, my friends, this is nothing but an Egyptian historical book with a bunch of lies twisted and turned and to make their God Yahweh that was a Canaanite God from Ugarit that is a son of El, which is not the most high. And they did not start worshiping that God until the 600s, um, five, the 6th century, which would be the 500s. So people, I'm telling you that when these people left, these Akhenaten Egyptian people that left with the Aten worship, and then they had Amun issues. And Amun and Aten were fighting these priesthoods. 
And when they were sent away, when the Egyptians were sent, excuse me, sent away, excuse me, guys, I ate some chili. When they were sent away with some other people that lived in Canaan and they left for 70 years and they were turned back, they were all forgotten. All these people died. And they just went on with the Babylonian concepts, but still kept some of the Egyptian concepts. It's no different. But they attached the Yahweh. Kept the Yahweh. So they just were Canaanites and, and just adopted the stuff. So until, I didn't want to make this video so long, but I had to go into the nitty gritty. Please, please stay with me, my friends. We're on this wonderful journey together for truth seeking, conspiracy unraveling, hotel, and we shall see you soon. Goodbye. Have a great day, guys. Bye.